little while ago, I made a video on Mermaid, the sort of markdown style syntax for creating diagrams and charts. It was a pretty popular video. It definitely needs an update and I have a bunch of other, what I'm gonna call diagrams as code content planned. But in the meantime, the people at Mermaid Chart, a new commercial company formed by some of the original creators of Mermaid, reached out to cover their platform and tool. And so in this video, I'm gonna take a look at it and what it adds on top of the default Mermaid syntax. If you like what you see in Mermaid Chart, I have an affiliate link showing below and also in the description. That will throw me a few cents here and there if you sign up. If you like what you see in general, you can find more about me at christianchiller.com or of course click any of the like, subscribe, share, etc. links below the player. With all that out of the way, let's get started with a quick reintroduction to what is Mermaid. Mermaid is a JavaScript library, so to render this kind of visual representation of the syntax, the tool needs to implement it. Fortunately, a lot of tools do implement it, actually. I'll come to that later, but to begin with, you may find just using the live editor to experiment with some of the syntax is, is a good place to start. So you can make um, changes here and it updates automatically. And you can also see sample diagrams and things like that. Many of you may think, great, but I would like to install something in the editor I'm already using. The good news is that is also very possible. You can see this link down here. Here's where one of the places where the connection between the open source project and the Mermaid Chart Company is a little unclear because this is uh, very prominent, <laughs> but this will take you to the commercial plugin, not the open source plugin. You actually want to go to this page. And then you'll see there's a lot available, <laughs> an awful lot available. Many by default, for example, Obsidian, it's in there by default and many others too. For VS Code, I use these two. This is the preview for the syntax and this is the syntax highlighting. Even these two are not the only options. There are plenty more actually. So have fun finding which ones work for you. Now, as you can see here, I counted them. There's actually over 20 available. Other examples, I'm not completely sure what exactly that is, but even excluding that, there's over 20. So <laughs> there's a lot. Let's have a look at, I'll look very quickly at some of the more popular ones. So this is a graph and I'll open the preview, which works in the default VS Code Markdown Preview. And you can see it here. It's tempting to think you can drag this around. You can't. Uh, let's see. That's also live updated as well. This determines the type. This determines the direction. So we could, for example, say that. And it goes that way instead. These are the individual nodes and the connections to the node. So for example, if I change this, it's gonna look a bit weird momentarily. You would see you get a different selection of connections to each node. There we go. The type of bracket determines the type of box. As you can see, curly equals this diagonal. I think there's technical terms for these. I don't know what they are, it's fine. The bracket is rounded rectangles and the square brackets are normal rectangles. So far so good. And pie chart, one of the things I really like about the pie chart, now I just have to reopen the preview, is it doesn't render quite so well in dark mode, but there we go. It calculates the percentage for you, so assuming there's more dogs, we could adjust this and this will change. And if I take that out, then it changes massively. Suddenly there's a lot of rat at options. There we go, you get the idea, and this is just the title. So that's the basics there, using it in VS Code. So here is the basic interface. Uh, it's another one of those websites that does not respect system dark mode. Let's uh, keep it like that for now. 
That looks nice as well. <laughs> now, there's a bunch of different options here. I'm going to stick to diagram for now, just to sort of compare like with like. So you get this synchronized interface between the two, but I'm not sure how you change the actual diagram type. It doesn't jump out to me, but let's make a few other changes here. So shapes, border, color, background color, text, color. I'm assuming I can just jump into the text here. This is slightly confusing here because I'm not 100% sure if many people using a visual tool would know what this fab uh, this this font awesome shorthand actually means. Uh, I guess clicking out of it, you sort of get a rough idea, but um, and there's no kind of picker or anything like that, so that could be confusing. But let's, for example, okay, interesting. Not sure why, but <laughs> maybe I'll undo that. There we go. Okay, anyway, I guess the rest is relatively self-explanatory. Ah, same again. Huh, interesting. Okay, if I click into here, I don't know how I prettify it again. There is a combined palette here. Let's see. Nope, nope. So I'm actually completely sure how I <laughs> make that look nice again, but uh, there we go. And I don't know how visual this is. Can I, I seemingly cannot just like drag it around like some other charts where we've got the arrow type I can change so that I can change uh, stroke color or delete it so I could delete it completely and now it's just floating around up here I also can't move this that sort of makes sense I mean mermaid has no real concept of like location everything just sort of connects but that might be something that people sort of expect in a tool like this but it looks like you can create new connections, interestingly. So I can create a new connection, but I seemingly can't move a pre-existing one unless I'm missing something. No, but if I deleted it, strangely, and created a new one, then it does work. I can keep creating new ones, but I can't edit them. I don't know if there's any kind of weird limit here. It starts to get a bit odd. Okay. Um, let's also then change the shape to that, for example. Yeah. And this is just some sort of loose image. So there, so over here. Again, so this is, oops, <laughs> this is kind of the time I would want to be able to move this around a bit, maybe. Yeah. Add a subgraph, add icons. I'm guessing that's what that is. Add an image. Something happened there. Can I change the image? Image URL. So it has to be a URL. And you can see it over here. It's not that seamless. But early days, I guess. What else do we have? Design. Hand drawn. Okay. So if I wanted to create a pie chart, for example, uh, there are templates here. Ah, here we go. So what will happen? I think you just have to start again. I don't want to replace it. No, I'd kind of like to create a new one. I guess I'll have to just go back. None of those templates are here, so I have to come back. Yeah, this is a little fiddly. Come to the template, create a, where was it? I've lost it. Pie chart. There. Yep, sure. Get rid of that. Yeah, so it's the same examples as on the website. Let's keep going, basically. And I've, I've messed that up by making that one so large, but there we go. It doesn't look like there's a tremendous amount you can change here. I don't even see a menu in this case. And under snippets, we have no helpers. Let's see if there's anything for any of the others. I mean, this is by far one of the more complex ones. Yeah, okay. So this is sort of similar to some of the other things we saw on the, the blocks here but in a different place. All right, so that's some of the basics. Next, I will have a look at what it adds in addition to just a semi-graphical interface for creating and loosely editing some diagrams. So far, so good, but let's take a look at some of the more 
interesting features here as opposed to just the, the visual editor. So first let's look at this whiteboard aspect. Now this is somewhat collaborative. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of collaborating with myself to make this work. Um, but so far, everything is mostly the same. Shapes, uh, that's a little different. Everything is mostly the same shapes, border, backgrounds, etc., etc. Seems a little freer in this case, strangely. Maybe this is where some of the negatives that I mentioned earlier kind of come into play. We can change the themes and we can also export. But I think where things get more interesting is here. So firstly, I will make the permissions a bit more open so I can experiment with this. Anyone with the link can edit. I have this link here. I change to an incognito window here. So firstly, we get the same kind of look, but I think we want to go to whiteboard. And now in theory, I will move that over there. I think that's where it should go. And we can see already, yeah. And you can also see myself here as well. A bit disconcerting. <laughs> and there's me there. Let's delete that. And yeah, there we go again. Um, let me actually just... So it's sort of cheating ever so slightly because there's not going to, well, there will be latency because we're still connecting across the internet, which is always weird. But you can see it's pretty instantaneous. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to do lots at once. Oh, I tried to hit delete. There we go. Can I undo? Yes. So you get the idea there. So it's actually pretty cool, pretty interesting. And then obviously, he says, obviously, I mean, this wouldn't be called mermaid chart if this wasn't the case. Can now get pure mermaid out of this and take that wherever I may want to. Uh, the syntax is getting a little messier maybe than normal, but that's, that's actually pretty useful. And I get that extra fluidity here. I wonder what it would be like with other types of charts. Let's have a look at the pie chart, for example, which is going to be a little different. So whiteboard. Ah, so there we go. Only available for flowcharts right now. So there we go. But this is a relatively new feature. So let's look at this AI chat then. Let's see what that's about. <laughs> Get started, select from a sample prompt or message mermaid AI. Timeline for planning a road trip. Mermaid... Uh, Mind map for animals. I'm not sure what a mind map for animals exactly is. Flowchart for making pizza. Sequence diagram for baristas. I think I, I'm going to go for something a bit different. I'm going to try and be a little unclear, not using flowchart, etc., etc. Okay. So this looks good, but it's actually just giving me a text response. This won't create an image. This is slightly confusing. You have to get a graphic first. So I'm going to try a different prompt to see what happens. Let's try one of the samples first, just to see if it can handle that better. Whoa, okay, that happened very quickly. Now we can edit it. Yeah, so this is more like it. And then of course, then we could put this into the, no, we can't put it into the whiteboard, but yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I wonder if we could refine this. Don't have to put pin. Is this systems in there? Okay, let's see. There we go. That's pretty cool. All right. So I'm going to try my own prompt again. I think what happened there was I didn't actually give give a prompt that generated a chart. So you do have to be specific. So I'm going to use flowchart then. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Ah, there we go. Yeah, that's a little boring. I mean, I could probably just delete it quicker, but. There we go. It's interesting it does it that way and then flips it. So let's actually do it the other way. Okay, there we go. And of course, then we can just change things here as well. So that's pretty interesting. I don't know what types of charts are supported. Let's see if we can get something a bit more nuanced, whatever that may mean. I don't see a pie chart here. Let's try a pie chart would need data, I suppose, which is opinionated. Let's see if it's clever enough. This would be quite interesting because then if it was like a rag application that could fetch 
this uh, data and then feed it into a chart. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Well, <laughs> it got some data from somewhere. Okay, yeah, it does say here, make sure the percentages accurate reflect real data. So it's not real data, but we could set real data. So let's say, for example, I mean, that's not correct. I could, and maybe at a set of source, we could try that in a second. Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can actually find the source and see if that works. I mean, one of these will do. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely accurate. It looks good. <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, it can't actually extract. So this would be an interesting feature to add. Maybe that is something in the future. <laughs> and then the final feature here is this presentation. I have a feeling that Mermaid has done presentations. Oh, I see. You just include them in to a presentation. So, I mean, any good presentation should have a pie chart. Uh, is that sele selected? Yes. Save and close. Save and close? Sure. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. So that's that's all that does. Um, that's fine. It doesn't look like I can then edit it or anything like that, though. So I'm not sure how useful that is massively, but... It's an interesting feature. So the one other thing to look at is there is actually a VS Code extension. It's not always completely clear that that's specific to Mermaid Chart. It says it here, but I get the feeling they took over an existing extension. Hence, it has such a large amount of users. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just assuming there. But uh, yeah, we'll see. You get this new view down here that has a bunch of... Diagrams. I seem to have not given a single one a name, so maybe I should do that. <laughs> Make your things a little easier. <laughs> we'll need to refresh. There we go. Ah, so it just embeds them in by the looks of it. So we can see here, view the diagram. And I guess that loads it in from somewhere. Yep, there we go. And I can edit it. Oh, it just goes back to the website. So I'm completely sure how useful that is. Yeah, I was hoping it would maybe have the ability to create a mermaid syntax right in VS Code and then uh, upload it or add it to your account from there. But it seems to just be kind of another front end into the web page, really. Yeah, that's not so massively useful, but um, it's a way to to get your charts in a new place. And that was my quick look at Mermaid Chart. It's an interesting service with some interesting ideas, possibly still early days. I think especially that AI feature could be very interesting if that's enhanced a bit. Maybe some of that ability to author within VS Code. I appreciate that's probably a bit of a challenge to, to get working, but that could also be an interesting feature to add if you found some interest in what you saw, then you can see a little affiliate link at the bottom of the screen or in the description where if you do sign up, I get a little, little bit from it to help me keep making videos and running things here with my wonderful slightly yellow lights today. If you like what you saw in general, you can find out more about me at christianchiller.com or of course, click any of those like, share, thank you, subscribe buttons below the player. I have been Christian Chiller. Thank you very much for joining me and take care, everybody. <music>